Good morning. Good to see you all this week. I uh, hope you are doing well so far. It's a beautiful uh, fallish day, and uh, I'm personally excited about that. Summer is not my favorite season, so this is a wonderful temperature. <laughs> so uh, when I see 50 something on the thermometer, that makes me happy. So if you if you like the hot, warmer weather, sorry, it's our it's our turn next. <laughs> uh, you see the. A lot of the, the beam work is continuing out there. They've been hard at work this week and got uh, this side mostly done, and they got to work on the other side, so they'll still be around uh, the course of this, this coming week at least. And uh, I don't know the exact timeline, but uh, so far as my untrained eye can see, it looks like so far so good. So uh, let's see, as far as announcements go, uh, there are new portals of prayer on the table back there. Those start in October, so you've got a few weeks to go on those, but the, the new issues are in, so pick, pick one up uh, on your way out, or pick more than one up. We usually have extras. Good thing to give out to somebody else who you think might could use a, a devotional book like that. And believe it or not, it is already start, time to start thinking about Trunk or Treat. Uh, uh, it's coming up probably faster than, uh, than we realize. Uh, the end of October. So there is a basket out there for donations if you would like to bring a bag of candy for Trunk or Treat. I know last year the turnout was way more than we expected, so there was a, uh, some emergency last-minute candy runs happening. Um, so uh, whatever you would like to bring in, we will be, uh, uh, be happy to take that and give it out, um, give it out on that day. Uh, October the 26th, I think, is the date we're looking at for that. So that's the Saturday before Halloween. But um, if you bring candy now, it will probably go into Carla Joe's office for safekeeping. Whether or not she is trustworthy <laughs> to, uh, to store all that candy without getting into it is for you to judge. Uh, <laughs> last year, most of it made it to the, uh, to the trunk of trees. <laughs> Yes. yes. <laughs> I don't know. If, 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 it, uh, um, if it's too much uh, leading her, you into temptation, then we can find another home for it. But <laughs> at least we'll keep it away from the kids in there. That's, that's probably the bigger danger. But uh, Let's see. Any other announcements that I'm forgetting this week? No. Let's see, I guess th this week we have board of directors meeting on Tuesday. Uh, I don't know if there's anyone from board of directors here to confirm or deny that we are having that, but all right. <laughs> Second Tuesday, as far as we know. So as far as we know, yep, all right. So for those of you that that applies to, then all right, we'll continue with our worship. <laughs>
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord is the strength of his people. He is the saving refuge of his anointed. To you, O Lord, I call, my rock, be not deaf to me, lest if you be silent to me, I become like those who go down to the pit. Hear the voice of my pleas for mercy when I cry to you for help, when I lift up my hands toward your most holy sanctuary. Blessed be the Lord, for he has heard the voice of my pleas for mercy. The Lord is my strength and my shield. In him my heart trusts, and I am helped. My heart exults, and with a song I give thanks to him. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the the saving refuge of his anointed. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above, and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house 
and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Worthy is Christ, the Lamb who was slain, whose blood set us free to be people of God. Power and riches and wisdom and strength. merciful ears be open to the prayers of your humble servants, and grant that what they ask may be in accord with your gracious will. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. those who have an angry heart, be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, with the recompense of God. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf unstuck. Then shall the lame man be like a deer, and the tongue of the mute sing for joy. For waters break forth in the wilderness, and streams in the desert, the burning and shall become a pool, and the thirsty ground springs of water. This is the word of the Lord. Our epistle is taken from James chapter 2. My brothers, show no partiality as you hold the faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory. For if a man wearing a gold ring and fine clothing And if you pay attention to the one who wears the fine clothing and say, you sit here in a good place, while you say to the poor man, you stand in this good or sit down at my feet, well, have you not then made a distinction among yourselves? But you have dishonored the poor man. Are not the rich the ones who oppress you and the ones who drag you into court? Are they not the ones who blaspheme the honorable name by which you were called? If you really fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, you shall love your neighbor as yourselves. You are doing well. But if you show partiality, you are committing sin and are convicted by the law as transgressors. 
transgressors. Whoever keeps the whole law but fails in one point has become accountable for all of it. What good is it, my brothers, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can that faith save him? If a brother or sister is poorly clothed and lacking in daily food, and one of you says to them, Go in peace, be warmed and filled, without giving them the things needed for the body, what good is that? So also by faith itself, it is, if it does not have works, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith apart from your works, and I will show you my faith by my works. This is the word of the Lord. returned from the region of Tyre and went through Sidon to the Sea of Galilee in the region of the Decapolis. And they brought to him a man who was deaf and had a speech impediment, and they begged him to lay his hand on him. And taking him aside from the crowd privately, he put his fingers into his ears, and after spitting, touched his tongue. And looking up to heaven, he sighed and said to him, Ephatha, that is, be open. And his ears were opened, and his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. And Jesus charged them to tell no one, but the more he charged them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. And they were astonished beyond measure, saying, He has done all things well. He even makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. This is the Gospel of the Lord.
seated. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. What kinds of things are your ears full of? What is it that has frozen up your tongue? Cat got your tongue? In other words, what has this miracle got to do with us? This gospel reading from Mark? Is this just another example of Jesus' compassion and power? As all of his miracles are in one form or another. Or are we too? deaf and mute in some way. Or I could put it like this. What is the way we should be using our ears and our tongues? Do we actually find ourselves doing that? Jesus speaks this word, Ephatha, one of a few examples in the Gospels where he records his his Aramaic words, even though the Gospels are written in Greek. It's a word that means to be opened completely, to be, to be torn asunder, to rip open the seal, to tear the, the cellophane off something and, and dig into it, or to not just open the door, but to pull the door off its hinges so it can never be shut again. Be opened. Be definitively, completely opened. Do we need that? Are we not hearing and speaking? Perhaps we are not medically deaf, but I think we find our ears are clogged in all kinds of ways. In fact, we are bombarded with things. The white noise of the world. You got the hum of a, of a big office, the murmur. When you're on a plane, the, that droning sound of the jet engine. Or, listen, the air's blowing, there's always that little bit of white noise in the background, lulls us to sleep. There's the other things that, that fill our ears up, all the useless information that we are, are uh, uh, bombarded by, celebrity gossip, ads and billboards and marketing, talking heads on TV. There's the stress and the worry that echo around in our minds. If you've ever had that, uh, that problem, then you know that feeling. The, the, the feeling that the, those thoughts that just bounce back and forth, bounce around and you can't seem to turn it off. Wives, have your uh, husbands ever demonstrated a kind of selective hearing? They hear, uh, they hear some things just fine, but when the, you say, what well, I told you to pick up milk on your way home, I don't remember you saying that. Our ears get clogged up in all sorts of ways. All the, the things that go into them, the gossip, the foul talk, hateful and angry words, trying to find silence. It's a difficult task, both inner and outer silence. This, uh, this gospel, this healing, makes me think of Psalm 40. He says that sacrifice and offering you did not desire, O Lord, but my ears you have opened. The pastor Eugene Peterson writes about this. He says this is such a brilliant metaphor Literally, it says, ears you have dug out for me. That yes, ear, ears you have opened, my ears you have opened, but you have dug them. He says, imagine what a human head would look like with no ears, only a smooth, impenetrable bone there on the sides. God speaks, no response. So God gets out his pick and shovel and he starts digging through and opening up a passage into the interior depths, into the mind and into the heart. But perhaps not just unbroken uh, bone, but more like a well that has gotten clogged, stopped up with trash, the noise of 
culture around us. Gossip, garbage, chatter. Our ears are so clogged up that we cannot hear God speak. In Genesis, it says that Isaac had to go back and, and redig the wells that his father Abraham had dug. The Philistines had come in and filled them in. Just like Isaac has to redig those wells, God has to redig our ears that have been filled up. And then there's our tongues. We speak when we should stay silent, and we're silent when we should speak. James 3, we just had this passage from James 2 today. James chapter 3 goes on to call the tongue a restless evil, a spark that lights a great wildfire. Do we shut our mouths to gossip? Or, the same token, do we stay silent when we should speak, when we should speak the truth? Are we afraid of facing the, the consequences or offending? Too often we too are mute. Our tongues are tied by false modesty, embarrassment, laziness, things like that. We listen to the things we should not listen to. We don't listen to the things we should. We speak when we should be silent, and we are silent when we should speak. Lord, what are we going to do about this? Jesus' reaction here as he heals this man he says he sighs. He sighs deeply. He groans. I imagine him doing that a lot when he looks at us. Ugh. He sighs, but he also acts. He opens. For this man, it says, his ears were opened and his tongue was released and he spoke plainly. Again, the Psalms say, open my lips, O Lord, and my mouth will declare your praise. The King James really makes it clear what's going on there. O Lord, open thou my lips. I can open my lips and say all kinds of things. But when you open my lips, O oh Lord, when you open my lips, then my mouth will declare your praise. When you open my mouth, that is what is going to come out. Not all the things that should not come out. Not all the things that should stay unsaid. But when you open my lips, I will declare your praise. Back in the early church, a pastor named Ambrose, this is around the year 300, he used this same word that Jesus uses, ephatha, be opened. He used it in his service of baptism. Be opened by the Holy Spirit, by faith. God is opening your ears to hear his word rightly. And the gifts that he is giving you here by, by water and the word, he is opening your ears to hear his word. He is opening your mouth to declare his praise. He is giving you faith. He is making this happen. Ephatha, be opened. And so, as Ambrose said, continue to hear the word of God. Continue to hear, read, learn, mark, and inwardly digest the word of God. In fact, we believe that scripture is only truly heard, only properly understood when it is heard in faith. We can read the Bible, but it is in many senses a closed book until the Holy Spirit opens our ears to truly hear. We can read the Bible, but until God opens our mouths by his Holy Spirit, then we truly proclaim the gospel. You know the expression, give someone an earful. Lord, give us an earful. We need it. Give us an earful of your word. Give us ears full of your word. Give us mouths open to receive and to give back. To speak your word, to be fed with your body and blood. Open our mouths, open our lips. 
so that we receive your gifts and we declare your praise. Talking about this passage, Martin Luther said, There are many people who are a thousand times worse off than this poor deaf and dumb man because they have ears that are really stopped up. They hear God's word, and yet they really do not hear it, nor do they want to. But those who hear God's word gladly, and to whom Christ says, as to the deaf man, Ephatha, they are helped. And the crowd says, he has done all things well. As much as Jesus tells them to not talk about it, and says the more zealously they proclaim it. He has done all things well, they say of him. He has. He has done all things well. He has done all things right. He has done all things perfectly. Yes, indeed. We put a different spin on that. He has done all things well. Perhaps they mean he has done everything well. He has made everything well. He has healed, and he has made whole. He has made it all, well, what do you want when you're hurt? You want mom. You want mom to come make it all better. Moms can do a lot, but they can only do so much. But Jesus, he has made it all better. He has made everything well. He heals, and when he heals, everything is completely, totally remedied. He has made it all whole. Another passage that this verse reminds me of is from Isaiah chapter 50, one of those passages of Isaiah about the Messiah. He says, The Lord has given me the tongue of those who are taught, that I may know how to sustain with a word him who is weary. Morning by morning he awakens my ear to hear as those who are taught. The Lord has opened my ear. Jesus has done all things well and right and good. He is the one who has the tongue who is loose to speak the word of God. He is the one whose ears are open to the Father's will. He is the one who has done it all right. And he is the one who delivers us and gives us that same righteousness as his gift. The ears are opened, the tongue is released, and he says this man spoke plainly. He spoke clearly, he spoke forthrightly. May our ears, too, be opened to the word of God. May our tongues, too, be released to speak the word of God. And by the, by the grace of the Holy Spirit, may we, too, speak plainly and clearly and forthrightly about Jesus at all times. Why don't we just sing together in this hymn, Praise the Almighty. Yes, I will laud him until death. With songs and anthems I come before him as long as he allows me breath. From him my life and all things came. Bless, O oh my soul, his holy name. O oh Lord, open my lips and my mouth will indeed declare your praise. And finally, there, is, uh, there are prayers, if you have uh, not noticed. Inside the front cover of the hymnal, there's a series of prayers for worship. One of those is a blessing on the word. O Lord God, bless your word wherever it is proclaimed. Make it a word of power and of peace to convert those not yet your own and to confirm those who have come to saving faith. May your word pass from the ear to the heart, from the heart to the heart to the lips, and from the lip to the life. Amen, O oh Lord, may this be so. May your word pass from our ears to our hearts, to our lips, to our lives. May we be opened and released to hear and proclaim. May the peace of God that passes understanding guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, he who opens and nothing can shut. Amen. We continue. We, we too open our lips to declare the praise of our Lord.
speaking the words of the Nicene Creed, declaring before God and before one another the faith that we have. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, life of life, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. The third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. He will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, by your Spirit, open our deaf ears to hear your word, that our tongues would be released to proclaim with zeal how your Son has done all things well. You have commanded your church to take the word of life to the ends of the earth, strengthen and support all those who proclaim your gospel. Give to us all wisdom and courage to tell others about Christ. Bless also those who hear with hearts that are receptive to your gifts. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, help all our, our parents and families in raising their children to know you as their hope that they may never put their trust in the things of this world in which there is no salvation, but always in you alone. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, as we place our hope in you, we ask for your blessing on our president, our governor, all, and all members of Congress and others who hold authority in our land, that their plans would be ordered for the welfare of those they govern, and that you would continue to work in our communities and our world to bring about your good and holy will. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, as your Son shows compassion to those who are injured or ill in any way, continue to look in grace upon those who are sick and in need. We remember before you all those who have requested our prayers, all those that we name to you in our hearts, all those who are, are ill and infirm in body, mind, and soul. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, create and sustain in us a, live, a lively and active faith in Christ, leading us by your Spirit to carry out all the good works that you have prepared for us to do, bearing good fruit as we draw our life from Jesus Christ, your Son, Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, source of all life, receive our prayers on this day in the name of your beloved Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
of your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you. Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who, having created all things, took on human flesh, and was born of the Virgin Mary. For our sake he died on the cross and rose from the dead to put an end to death, thus fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. Therefore with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we loud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, 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 of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood, as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, and gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you, for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
May this, the true body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in faith unto life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same, in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.